Thank you so much for joining me online. I'm Kevin Hurd, and this is another episode of Kevin Talks Tech, my technology blog, my technology podcast, where I talk about everything related to technology and try to make it simple, easy, and fun to understand. Thank you again for joining me here today. I've been doing this for a while, and actually, I've been waiting a while to get to this particular topic we're going to talk about today. What I really needed for this one was a computer that really wasn't functional anymore, one that I didn't want to keep around, and finally, my old HP desktop, I'm giving it the boot. I've gotten a new desktop now. I'm ready to pretty much scrap this one at this point. And so what I'm gonna do today is break down the internal components of this computer. So if you're thinking about building your own computer, or maybe you just wanna have a better understanding of how your computer works and the, the guts of what's inside, maybe you wanna do some upgrades of your own, I'm gonna to explain today what's in here and how it all works. So if you wanna follow along and you've got a computer right now, this is the time to grab it. Otherwise, you can pause along with the video if you'd like to. What you're gonna first wanna do is take off the panel of the computer, the side panel. This is gonna vary depending upon the type of desktop that you have. Some, you may require a toolbox to do this. The nice thing about this HP desktop is there's just a little screw right on the side. All I did was just kinda of twist it off and we give it a little pull and now we can see the inside of this computer. Now you can't right now, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to use my cell phone cam. This is gonna give you a much better view inside the computer. And boy, oh boy, look at all those internal components. If this is really not familiar to you at all, if you don't know what's going on here, let's try to make some sense of it. And so let's start with this piece right here, this large square, uh, what appears to be brown colored board on your screen right now. And what we're looking at is the motherboard of the computer. You can really think about this as the piece of equipment that really drives the computer. This is where all these external components right here hook up into. This is what really drives the whole, I guess you could call it the, the nucleus of the computer, the core of it. Without the motherboard, we couldn't have a computer. Now let me break down a couple other components here for you as well. Let's move over here where this is going to be your power supply. And you can see it does take up a pretty big chunk of space. If you're building a computer, you're gonna to wanna to take that into consideration how big your power supply is gonna end up being. If you look at the back, you've got your plug-in right here. And then of course, all of your um, different wires and such going into the back right here. Now one thing that's really nice about this computer and that I usually like in computers is for the power supply to have its own fan back here. I would hope, I'm not 100% sure if that's standard or not by now. Um, this is actually an add-on power supply. The original power supply that came with this HP died and so um, I was able to uh, get a new power supply, was able to hook it in and away we went. All right, next thing on our list, let's go over here. This is the CD drive, DVD drive. You can see if we move up here, this is where it's connected. Now one nice thing about this computer is it does also have an external expansion bay on it where I could hook up a second CD drive as well. This drive in this case does DVD, it does CD, and so there's no reason to really have a second drive on it. But it does have that capability. Yours might as well. If we move down here, this is a very another, uh, very, important piece of equipment in this spot. This is the hard drive of the computer. I like to think about this kind of as the long-term memory of the computer. This is where your files are stored. This is where your operating system lives. If this dies out, just like your motherboard, you really don't have a functioning computer that you can use. You're gonna need to replace that. And this, this is a good moment for me to actually just quickly remind you, now that we got the case open, to not forget that a hard drive is a working component, one that has moving pieces in it and sometimes can break. We can't go inside the hard drive right now uh, because I'd have to take it out of this casing. But you can imagine just by looking at it, there are lots of moving components in here that are keeping this hard drive functioning. Sometimes moving components die and so it's a really good idea to make sure that you're backing up your data. It's a good idea that you've got it stored in a cloud or on an external hard drive. And if you do that, that way you've got a nice backup copy that you can move to a primary drive that could be reinstalled in here if this one were to die. Now, if you're interested in external hard drives, we do have a Kevin Tox Tech video up talking about the different drives that are out there, the external drives that you can buy and finding one that is right for you. Now, let's move on to another component. This over here 
is another type of memory, but this is called RAM or random access memory. I want you to think about this as the short term memory of the computer. You know when you're running a program and maybe you're running three programs, four programs, five programs and your computer starts to get a little bit sluggish? Well, depending upon how much RAM you have is going to determine how quick or how slow that um, the computer is able to handle all those programs open at once. That's what the RAM typically controls. The more RAM you have in the computer, typically you're going to be able to handle more programs being open at once. There's more short-term memory for it to allow. Eventually those programs are closed out and as you close out those programs, more short-term or random access memory does become available. Now it's very easy to add RAM to your computer. I'm going to talk about that in another video. For now, let's move on to our next and final step, or one of them anyway. I want to point this piece out here on the motherboard. This is a fan and one thing I really like about this computer and one thing I advise you to remember is to see if you can get a computer that does have this onboard fan on the motherboard. What you don't want is you don't want a motherboard getting hot. This motherboard, or actually not this motherboard, but a previous one I had ended up getting hot. It ended up blowing out a few components and the computer basically was unusable. I think I ended up getting a, a new computer just because replacing the motherboard was a, a real pain. And so it's nice to have a fan just to help keep things a little bit cool, keep that motherboard nice and cool. And let's move on to the final piece then. Now, with the computer, when you're looking at your graphics on the computer, sometimes the graphics look really smooth, especially when we're talking about gaming, maybe watching videos. Sometimes they might be a bit choppy, and this may do, be due in part to the video graphics card that you have on your computer. There are two types of graphics cards or video adapters out there. You've got onboard graphics and then you've got an external graphics card which can be added or basically taken off of the computer. Now if we look real closely on this computer, I'm going to show you what this one has. And this should look familiar to you. This is where you typically hook up a computer monitor or some days now even a television set to your computer. It displays the image on a monitor or a TV. The video adapter in your computer handles that. This one is on board if you look at it real closely. And what we mean by on board is that it's part of the motherboard. Now, some computers have their own independent graphics cards that can be removed from the computer. You could actually add a graphics card to a computer like this. I don't know if I have a slot though back here, an opener available slot for it right now. Um, I could add an onboard graphics an onboard graphics system to this. That would enhance the graphics. It would be able to render the graphics a little bit better. And so if you are installing one of those as well, there are lots of instructions online on how to do that. You of course want to make sure you get one that is compatible with your computer and also really make sure it's worth it to put it on your computer. This computer right here is older. It doesn't quite have the same, you know, high level equipment as at one time, you know, it did at one time. Now the equipment's a little bit older. And so I probably wouldn't end up getting a, a graphics card for a computer like this. I'd probably be better off going and getting a, a newer computer that probably even has better onboard graphics. And so that's a breakdown of this computer. Again, we're talking about a desktop computer. Yours is probably going to look similar. Now, one thing that I really, um, want to make sure that I hammer away here. One thing that I think is really worth um, mentioning is you do want to make sure that you're in a good area when you're working on this. And one thing I always like to do is I don't like to be around any area that I'm going to get shocked in possibly. Uh, that would mean maybe being on carpet. So a lot of times what I like to do is make sure that I'm on a, a hardwood floor or some type of floor that's not carpeted where there's no risk of shock or very little risk of shock. And then I also goes without saying here, this is very important, I always make sure the computer is unplugged and there's no power running into the computer. If you look right now, you can see there is no power going into this computer at all. There is no cord hooked up to it. So I like to be on the safe side. I like to make sure it's completely unplugged from the wall and that I'm on a harder surface. Now, if any of this was foreign to you, if you need a second look at this, maybe you need a written explanation, you can head to kevintalkstech.com where I have broken this all down for you. I've got it written out. I've got some pictures on there and hopefully that makes it a little bit easier. And of course, if you have any questions too, send me your comments. I really, really like to get comments. Most because, mostly because I really like to answer them and to hear what's on your mind and make sure that I address all of your concerns in these videos. So again, kevintalkstech.com, youtube.com backslash kevintalkstech. We'll see you again next time. Have a great day.